and it bring una some report with the online concerning the Ambazonian struggle. Countries the way they don't make effort towards the struggle, and uh, I will drop the link for this particular article my WhatsApp channel, and make una go for the go click on it, una read on it detail. But I think say my read them a few things the way una go understand them right now from 2018. The Anglophone crisis drew increasing international attention and became a challenge to Cameroon's foreign relations. Triggered, triggered by a violent crackdown on the 2016-2017 Cameroonian protests, the conflict escalated from a low-scale insurgency to a civil war-like situation. While Cameroon enjoys support from African countries, no country has openly supported the Ambazonian independence movement. However, many countries have put pressure on Cameroon to talk to the separatists. In addition, the separatists enjoy support from officers in the Nigerian army who have helped arrange arms deals for them. While African countries have been largely silent on the issue and opposed any non-African interference, many Western countries have put pressure on Cameroon to open a dialogue with the separatists. In May 2019, an informal discussion was held at the United Nations Security Council a milestone after nearly two years of little international involvement international organizations that have so far reacted to the ambazonian situation african union until 2019 the african union remained largely silent on the anglophone crisis on july 27 2019 the african union welcomed the upcoming swiss mediated talks commonwealth of nations in november 2019 Commonwealth Secretary General Patricia Scotland expressed support for the peace process initiated by the Cameroon government, the European Union. On June 20, 2018, the European Union supported the entry of UN bodies to the Anglophone region and called upon the Cameroonian government to allow this. In March 2019, High Representative F Federica Mogherini stated that the President the persistent violence and human rights abuses in the northwest and southern regions of Cameroon have created an unacceptable number of victims as well as enormous human and material damages. She also blamed Cameroonian media and politicians for incitement through hate speech. In April 2019, the European Parliament passed a motion condemning human rights violations in southern Cameroon and calling for an investigation of possible war crimes committed by Cameroonian soldiers. It also called on Cameroon to stop using military trials for civilians and francophone courts for anglophone detainees. The motion concluded that the anglophone crisis, if it continues, should be tabled at the United Nations Security Council. The European Union statement was met with condemnation in the Senate of Cameroon, with Senate President Masenya Ntifenji calling it a litany of false hopes. GFNG also stated that Cameroon would be open to receiving an EU delegation so they could see for themselves. In June 2019, the European Union gave its blessing to the upcoming Swiss mediated negotiation, United Nations. On May 30, 2018, the United Nations declared a humanitarian crisis in southern Cameroon and started organizing aid. Through the declaration, the United Nations assumed responsibility for the safety of civilians in southern Cameroon. And to this end, it could intervene against both warring parties. The United Nations has also called for impartial investigation of possible human rights violations in the Anglophone region. On November 20, 2018, the UN condemned both sides, the separatists for abductions school attacks and killings of policemen and the government for carrying out extrajudicial executions. On February 7, 2019, Allegra Baoshi, the UN President and Humanitarian Coordinator for Cameroon, said that the situation was a forgotten crisis and should be put near the top of the UN's agenda. On May 6, 2019, the UN UN High Commissioner for Human Rights, Michel Bachelet, said that there was still a window of opportunity to end the crisis, but the Cameroonian government had to take decisive action to win 
the trust of the population in the southern Cameroon. And I will also come to reactions from countries, Africa, and all the likes. Ladies and gentlemen, fellow Ambazonians, on this platform, I bring to you updates, I bring to you information that concerns the life of our liberation struggle. If you look, if you follow up with that article I just read, you discover that between 2016 2019, our struggle gained international phase. It gained the sympathy from the international organized international community. And they were like looking into it. Okay, what can we do? How can we help these people? Oh, that was the peak of the moment. 2016-2018, when uh the leaders of the struggle were adopted, it you know, there were some kind of imbalances and all the like you see the infighting and all the life has caused a lot of problems. And today we are where we are. We are hearing about kidnappings, ransom taking, and all the like. These things were not existing from 2016 to 2017, 2019. They we're not hearing about any kidnapping, only real work on the ground. How did we get here? What happened? What happened? Why have some people derailed? Why have some people gone away from the original focus? My name is Fabiano Depo. I hope this video found you well. I will be coming again with reactions or what other countries like Poland, Belgium, uh, the UK, France, uh, Germany, you know, Peru, countries around the world, even African countries, Egypt, Chad, what they have done, Central African Republic, it will shock you what Chad and Central African Republic don't have done, even Egypt, to Ambazonia as we are fighting this war of liberation. I will be right back. And I will put this article on my WhatsApp channel. Please, you can just get to the comment section. If you don't have the link yet, I will give it to you and that will be fine. And I think it's worthwhile and you can read it at your own even time. Thank you very much. I'll see you again for our next update.